Hey everyone, hope you guys are having a great day. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to implement throttling in JavaScript. Now, what is throttling? So throttling is nothing more than just taking some sort of expensive function and just limiting the rate of how often it's called. Generally speaking, when you are throttling a function, you are calling it between certain intervals rather than just continuously calling it all at once. I made a video about how throttling is different from debouncing, but they both sort of accomplish similar tasks, but in unique different ways. So if you're curious about how debouncing works, watch the previous video. It's gonna be linked somewhere on the screen. And also I wanted to mention that I have a website where I do teach a full in-depth course of studying for front-end engineering interviews, questions that are generally asked by top tech companies like Google, Meta, Apple, and so forth. And these are very realistic questions that you'll be seeing. So if you're curious to learn more about that, check out the link here. It's called frontendlead.com. With that being said, let me show you guys an example of throttling in action. So like I was mentioning earlier, throttling is nothing more than limiting the rate of how often a function is called. This example on the left, every time I move my mouse, we will see three different actions. We'll see a regular action of when the mouse move event is called. We'll see the debounced action, which is called only in the start or end of your mouse move event. And finally, the throttling should be just called between a specific interval. So as I move my mouse here, you can see the regular is called so often, but the throttle is called between a specific interval. So that is what we're gonna be implementing today in JavaScript. All right, so let's build throttling ourselves in JavaScript. So I have recreated a very similar example to what we just saw. Um, I added a document to dot add event listener uh, mouse move event, which takes an, ex an expensive function. And this expensive function is doing nothing more than just doing a console.log um, your X and Y position on the screen. So if I move my mouse on the screen, it will console the X and Y position and that shows up on the bottom right corner. Now you notice this is being called every single time I've moved my mouse. So let's make this a throttled function so that it's only called maybe every one second interval. So first things first, let's define uh, a, a variable called const throttled which is throttle. And then the first argument is gonna be the function that we wanna throttle. So we'll say the expensive function is the function we wanna throttle. And the second argument is the delay. So we'll just put a one second delay for now. And then we'll just change the, we'll just make sure our mouse move event is calling the throttle function rather than the expensive function directly. Next, let's build the throttle function itself. So function throttle. Remember, it takes two arguments. The first argument is a callback, and the second argument is the delay. And the throttle function is a higher order function, meaning it's gonna be returning a function itself that needs to be called. But the throttle function will keep track of two things initially. One is a timer, so we'll say let timer. And the second is the last time this function was called. So we'll call it let last time called. And let's start off with a zero value, and this will make more sense when I start to type things up. So remember, this is a higher order function, so it returns a function, and it takes the arguments that will be passed in from the initial expensive function. So now let's actually build a logic for how we can throttle our function. So for this, we're gonna need to keep track of three different variables. The first is just the current time. So we'll say current time equals to day dot now. The second will be the difference between the current time minus the last time called. So we'll just call this difference time equals to current time minus last time called. Lastly, we want to create a variable called delay remaining equals to the delay minus the difference time. Cool. So now what we can simply check is as long as delay remaining is greater than zero, we can do stuff. Otherwise, we'll do some other stuff. Now we wanna invoke our um, callback somehow, right? So let's build a function called function invoke callback, which does nothing more than just calls callback dot call this and arcs and the reason why we want to use the call method here or the apply method is we want to preserve the this context to the context where it's being called and also preserve the arguments that are coming in and also we want to update the last time called to the current time so we'll say last time called 
equals to date dot now. And then here, what we want to say is if there's a timer, clear timeout timer. And then we want to say timer equals to set timeout. And we can just simply call our involve callback here with um, our delay remaining. Otherwise, we can simply just invoke our callback. All right, this should be enough, so let's try this out. So now when I run this, we should expect on mouse move event, the console.log to be called around every one second. And yep, that works as expected. And that's how you implement throttling in JavaScript. If you found this video helpful, please press the like button below and consider subscribing. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks.